All right, let's talk about graphing inverse functions. So we've already talked about what inverse functions are, how they need to be one-to-one, -one, and how to go about finding them algebraically by switching x and y. Graphing is very, very similar. As I've said repeatedly throughout these lectures, the key is flipping the domain and range, or flipping x and y. All right, so the geometry of the inverse. To graph the inverse, all right, we're, we can find some ordered pairs that are on the graph of f. How do those ordered pairs change on the inverse? And hopefully all of you are thinking, hey, that means the x and y's flip. So the ordered pairs flip. So we interchange x and y to get ordered pairs that are on the graph of f inverse. Okay. We're going to plot those points. And then we're going to sketch the graph of f inverse through the points. All right, so the x-intercept for f becomes the y-intercept for f inverse, and vice versa. All right, so in other words, the inverse is reflected or flipped over the line y equals x, the diagonal, all right, or the identity function, as I've called it. Okay, so let's go back to the example that we ended with last time in finding the inverse algebraically. All right, so we had f of x equals x minus 2 all cubed. All right, we algebraically found the inverse to be uh, the cube root of x plus 2. Okay, so what's the graph look like? All right, so we have, and I have shown you before, that this is f right here. This was the cubic function, all right, y equals x cubed, shifted to the right two places. Okay, and so notice we have this x-intercept at 2, right? Well, that x-intercept becomes the y-intercept in the inverse. All right, in other words, we have the cube, basic cube root function now shifted up two places. Okay, and we can see if you were to hold this dotted red line, all right, end and end, and f just rotate or flip, this dotted red line, y equals x, we can see how the f function becomes the f inverse function. In other, in other words, every x, y coordinate flips. All right, so let's, let's look at another example. Okay, so here again is just an arbitrary example where you can see uh, with the blue function f and the inverse function f inverse in red, how we're flipping over the black line y equals x. All right, how the y-intercept, let me grab my pen here, uh, let's actually start with the x-intercept. The x-intercept of f becomes the y-intercept for f inverse, okay? Similarly here, all right, how uh, we're just seeing points are flipped or reflected across this black line y equals x. All right, uh, one last thing that I want to talk a little bit about before we wrap up inverses is how to find the inverse of a function with a restricted domain. Okay, so let's let f of x equal the square root of x plus 5, and let's try to find the inverse. All right, well, first of all, the square root of x plus 5, that's one of those functions where we get a restricted domain, okay? This, I have taught you guys, uh, given square roots, how to solve for the, for the domain. Remember, we take x plus 5, and we solve greater than or equal to 0, and when I solve this inequality, I get x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5, okay? And that's what this interval says, that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. All right, so the function f is 1 to 1, all right? Again, it's just the square root function shifted to the left 5 units, and it does have an inverse, all right? So we can find the inverse algebraically, all right? So Let's go through here again. We always start by replacing the function notation with y. So y equals the square root of x plus 5. 
All right, here comes the key to the entire lesson. We switch x and y, and now I need to go about solving for y, or getting y by itself. Again, let the English guide you guys, okay? So we read this as the square root of y plus 5. y plus 5 is under that square root. That square root is the most outside thing, so we've got to undo it first. Thus, I square both sides. Then I subtract 5, all right? And lastly, I replace y with my f inverse notation. So I have my inverse function is x squared minus 5, all right? What is that? What's it going to look like? All right, well, I imagine many of you are going to say, well, hey, that's just the basic parabola shifted down five units. You're right, but you're also wrong. All right, and let's talk about why that's wrong. Recall the domain of f. It's just negative 5 to infinity, all right? The range of f is 0 to infinity. What do we know about domain and range for the inverse? they flip, all right? And so the domain of the inverse is the range of f, which is x greater than or equal to zero, all right? So the domain of f is negative five to infinity, all right? And that's going to be the range of f inverse, all right? And so again, what I want to show you with this graph is how we don't get what you think is the entire inverse. We only get half of it. All right, so here f, that's our, our blue function here, is our original function, square root of x plus 5. All right, and so we can see clearly, yes, the, the x-intercept becomes our y-intercept. All right, the y-intercept becomes our x-intercept. All right, but if you had just seen it on paper as x squared minus 5, many of you would have thought the entire parabola, all right? But that's not right, all right? We only get, let's see, do I have a way to, hmm. All right, so we only get half of the parabola. All right, the half that gets reflected across the line y equals x, or the half that represents our correct domain, which is x greater than or equal to zero, okay? All right, so let's review a few important facts about inverses. If f is one to one, the inverse will exist. The domain of f is the range of f inverse, and vice versa, the range of f is the domain of f inverse. We just saw with the last example how very important that can be. If the point AB lies on the graph of f, then the point BA lies on the graph of f inverse. Okay, so again, all this is saying, we are seeing the same thing a hundred different ways. All right, points, the coordinates flip x and y flip, domain and range flip, graphs flip over the line y equals x. It all says the same thing, guys. All right, and then lastly, to find the equation for the inverse, what are you going to do? You guessed it. You flip x and y. All right, and so flipping x and y is the key to understanding, graphing, and finding inverses.